Thank you, everybody, for coming to the Aaron Torres Podcast YouTube page. I do have one quick favor before we get to the video that you came here for, and that is very simply this. You see that little red subscribe button below this video? Go ahead, smash that subscribe button. It really does help me. It really does help this channel grow and my audience grow. So go ahead and hit that red subscribe button. And now, here is the video that you came here for. All right, let's transition to the other team from the Champions Classic. And it was funny, right? I was watching Michigan State on Sunday. They played against Ohio State. And I had this bright, brilliant idea. I thought I was the smartest guy in the world. I was watching. I said, you know what? They stink. Kansas stinks. We just talked about them. Duke and Kentucky stink. The NCAA should just do the complete money grab and just put them in the first four of this year's NCAA tournament. Kentucky, Kansas, Duke, and Michigan State, four historically relevant teams that aren't very good this year. And then I realized, oh, wait a second. That's just the Champions Classic that was already played and was really bad, and none of us want to watch it again. But anyway, Michigan State, I do want to talk about them because I do think they're an interesting scenario, um, and I don't think that they're the same as Kansas. Obviously, they were not involved in the FBI stuff. They are a different team, and I think they're struggling for different reasons, but they are relevant, and here's why. Because they lost to Ohio State on Sunday. Final score, 79-62. to Score wasn't even close to that in terms of uh, how competitive the game was. And with the loss, they fall to 8-6 and six overall. And how about this? They are now 2-6 and six in the Big Ten and in second to last place. They are ranked 13th out of 14 teams in the Big Ten this year. That blew my mind. I knew they were struggling. I didn't know they were 13th out of 14 teams in the Big Ten. Part of it is they've just played fewer games than people. So like Penn State has played more games and because of it, well, I guess they've only played one more game. Because of it, there are teams that have played more games, have, haven't had a shutdown like Michigan State. And so yes, they have had more opportunities to pick up wins. But what I'm trying to tell you is it's really dire for Michigan State. And they are inching closer and closer to missing the NCAA tournament. And I want to talk about them because one, I haven't. Two, they've actually played twice since the last time that I recorded this podcast. And it was actually worse the last time they played. Don't know if you saw, they lost 67 to 37 to Rutgers. Yes, you heard that correctly. They scored 37 points. And then, of course, they lost on Sunday in a game that, one, Ohio State is good. And two, the 17-point deficit does not sound good. But I'm telling you, it never felt that close. Ohio State got up. They didn't even play well down the stretch and still cruised to a victory. And it just hit me. Michigan State is in that Duke-Kentucky conversation of they're just not very good right now, and they're going in the wrong direction. They might miss the NCAA tournament, and so what's going wrong? Why? It's different than Kansas. Let's talk about it. First of all, you know, I think that they are struggling simply because of the fact they lost some really good players, right? And I know nobody feels sympathy for a Kansas, Michigan State, Villanova, Virginia, Texas Tech, whoever, Kentucky, Duke, when they lose good players, but I do think that is important. You lose maybe the best point guard in your program's history, not named Magic Johnson or Mateen Cleaves last year, Cassius Winston, first team All-American. Um, and you lose Xavier Tillman, who was an early second round pick to the, to the Memphis Grizzlies, two of the best players in your program, two guys that were truly elite at the college level. And there's no replacing them. And not only is there no replacing them, but I think they are what they did and what they brought to the program is a large part of why Michigan State is struggling. First of all, you look at Michigan State coming into the year, there's kind of questions of, do they have a point guard? Is there a guy to set everything up? Cassius Winston was so great at that, and largely they have struggled in that regard. They have a young point guard-ish type kid named Rocket Watts, who played off the ball last year with Cassius Winston, was a great sixth man. He's averaging nine points and three assists, but he's not really a point guard, and they're trying to make him a point guard, and he was better off the ball last year, and you look at his stats toward the end of the year, they're essentially the exact same as they were a year ago. Last year finished with nine points, two and a half rebounds, 1.7 assists. This year, uh, nine points, two rebounds, three and a half assists, but also more turnovers. So he's not really a point guard. Aaron Henry, who's probably their best overall player, is not really a point guard. And so you have that as a problem. The other problem is they just can't score. They just can't shoot specifically. And when you look at the numbers, they back it up. Most notably, the last two games, 28% from three against Rutgers, or 28% from the field against Rutgers. Not going to beat anybody shooting 28%. Four of 20 from three. Sunday, it was only slightly better. 
32% from the field, 21% from three. Not going to get the job done. Going to be a problem. And I think when you look at those two problems, you don't really have a point guard. You don't shoot the ball well. I think they correlate, right? I I don't want to spend a ton of time just breaking down X's and O's with Michigan State. You know that's not what the show is about. But I do think when you watch them, they have a lot of the same problems that Kentucky has right now and that Duke has largely had throughout the season in that they have trouble kind of getting into an offense. They have trouble getting into the lane, creating for others, getting open shots, and it shows with the shooting percentages, with the turnover percentages, 14 turnovers per game. That's not going to get the job done against anybody. But I also think that Michigan State has been, like so many other teams in college basketball, I do think the COVID stuff is real with Michigan State, right? And I will say this. I've been thinking a lot about it. I've criticized John Calipari a ton on this show, right? I've criticized Coach K a ton on this show. Some of the Coach K stuff was for off-the-court stuff. But the more that I look at this, the more that I realize all of these programs essentially have the same problem. They've had to start. They've had to stop. They've had players in. They've had players out. And all of the problems are basically across the board the same for all of these elite programs that have new rosters, that have new players in the program that weren't there last year. Michigan State, Tom Izzo said in the broadcast, he has never been this late in the season and has no idea what his rotation is. Guess who that sounds like? Duke. Guess who that sounds like? Kentucky. Uh, he also said, um, you know, that, that, that um, beyond that, there's the, the guys aren't used to playing together. And that's when it hit me, right? Because one of the things I try to do is I always try to contextualize things on this show. I don't always have the answers. I don't know. You know, everyone thinks, oh, all, all Torres does is hot takes. But as I always say, There are excuses and there are reasons. And I do think when you look at a program like Michigan State, I am not making excuses for them. I'm not making excuses for Duke, for Kentucky, for these teams struggling. But I do think there are reasons for a team like Michigan State to struggle. Another interesting thing that came out of the broadcast on CBS on, I guess it was Sunday afternoon, of Michigan State's 15 players, 13 of them have had COVID. Tom Izzo, for the record, had COVID. And, when, and it kind of just hit me, right? I've been talking about the impact of COVID, start, stop, all that stuff over the last couple months. I don't think it hit me how crazy it is, how much it would impact a program to have that many guys miss that much time until I actually heard Tom Izzo say, and by the way, I don't know if he broke any HIPAA laws by talking about it, but 13 of 15 guys, just think about that. Just think about trying to put together a team in basketball where chemistry and knowing each other and having um, continuity is so important when 13 of your 15 guys have missed time because of COVID. It's unbelievable. Think about it. You want to start, a couple guys are missing time. Then you you get them back and a couple more guys miss time. And then you get those guys back and a couple more guys miss time. And then the guys that were out early, they're just getting used to the new guys and then the new guys have to leave. Beyond that, think about also the fact that Every time that somebody tests positive, there's probably a couple guys that are out with contact tracing. The fact that the coaching staff was out. And so when I look at a Michigan State, it's no wonder they have no continuity. It's no wonder they struggle to create offense in the half court. It's no wonder that they are struggling the way that they are. It's because they haven't basically had their whole team all year. Not an excuse, but a reason. And I do think in the bigger picture, it's going to be something fascinating to follow with all of these teams. But as it pertains to Michigan State specifically, I just think it's going to be fascinating going forward because it's kind of like the Kansas deal, right? Kansas, like, I think Kansas has enough gas in the tank to get it figured out for this year. I don't think they can get it figured out in the bigger picture. But I think it's the opposite for Michigan State. I don't know that they got enough gas in the tank for this year. They're currently at 8-6 and six overall and 2-6 and six in the Big Ten. And you look at the rest of their schedule, there are some winnable games. They do play at home against Penn State and at home against Nebraska in two of their next three. But they also have two games against Iowa, including one on Tuesday. Two games, uh, excuse me, one game against Michigan, one game at Purdue, who already beat them, and one game at Indiana. And so you're talking about a scenario where they got about seven or eight games left, and they're eight and six overall. And even if they win three, the, the three that they're supposed to, Penn State, Nebraska, and Maryland, that gets them to 11 and six. But, I mean, they're still going to have to beat some teams that so far they have not shown that they are capable of beating, whether it is uh, Iowa, whether it is Michigan, maybe Purdue, who they had success against before they blew the lead late. But I look at this Michigan State team, man, 
And it reminds me an awful lot of Duke and of Kentucky. I just don't know if they have enough in the tank for this year to get to the NCAA tournament where we just expect them to be. Uh, and if they don't, I think a lot of it, I, you know, I, I don't try to make excuses for people, but I do think part of it would be COVID-related with the start and stop. 13 of 15 players at Michigan have tested positive for COVID. I can't even imagine what it's like to try to run practices, to try to run meetings, to try to run five-on-five five when you have that many guys missing that much time.